What's up guys and welcome to part three of our build log for Project Baron. We have a lot to get through today, so I'm not gonna waste your time with a long intro here, but what I wanted to get done by the end of this video was to have the loop fully assembled and filled. And then part four is gonna be testing and probably some pretty sexy B-roll shots. So let's get right into it right now. So you've actually may have seen me post about this on Twitter, uh, but after I did everything I reasonably could to ensure that all of the pass-through holes were drilled in the appropriate spots and everything was gonna be straight when the, uh, when the tubes were installed, I went ahead and drilled these out, put in the tubes, and as you guys can hopefully tell, they're not exactly parallel. Now the problem here is actually twofold. One, as you guys could maybe make out down here there's so so little there's maybe a millimeter of room left in between these two fittings uh for that i can potentially even think about moving the holes closer together to get these to be perfectly parallel the second problem is that if i move if i drill out either of these holes a little bit more and move one of these fittings so that they are closer together it could actually expose the, the, the previously drilled hole on the edge here because there's not a whole lot of overlap between the fitting itself and the hole that's drilled. So I have to think about what I wanna do here, perhaps do some filing of a hole, make it like a millimeter, half a millimeter or a millimeter bigger, slide one of these fittings over just a, just a a tad and make these to be as parallel as possible um, without exposing this hole. I, I'm not sure, uh, but that's what I'm gonna be working on first thing, uh, first thing today. My mediocre file skills have come in handy. Uh, I've managed to slide this pass through fitting to the left by about a millimeter. Um, they can't get any closer. These fittings can't get any closer. They're actually touching. Um, the, rib, the, the little little rib for her pleasure action here is that they're actually touching. So these can't get any closer together. So this I think is as parallel as we're gonna get these tubes and I actually think it looks good. Uh, so I think we fixed the problem uh, without really exposing the, uh, the side over here, this uh, on that side, hold on, that side right over there. Um, I actually used a Sharpie and just colored in the uh, the raw metal edges and there wasn't really much exposed anyway. So I think that uh, it's not gonna be a problem. I think it looks pretty good uh, and we're gonna move on. Our second set of pass-throughs finally came in. So I was able to install uh, these and these, uh, made sure the tubes are all lined up straight. Um, so we're all set down here. Now the next step is actually not going to be to run these tubes vertically It's actually going to be to install the fans and radiator down below Because when these tubes pass through we need to know what kind of spacing we're dealing with down here before installing the soft tube that's going to uh, Connect everything together down here as well as the uh, we need to make sure that there's spacing for the drain valves which are going to come off of um, these two sets of pass-throughs down here also. So we got to get the fans and radiator installed down here and then we could start working on connecting everything down below uh, with soft tube. The bottom 480 and the Corsair ML fans are installed. Had um, just a tad bit of clearance worries uh, on this pass-through here in the back. Um, I'm gonna flip this around and show you guys but just want you to notice like there are four fans down here and there's still like huge amounts of space. Uh, this case is just so enormous that it makes even such a gigantic radiator and cooling system look actually kind of puny. Uh, but we're still gonna have plenty of cooling capacity with, uh, with two 480s in here, should be good to go. So right here is the issue that we were having. This 90 degree fitting is actually just barely touching this radiator. I don't think that we're going to have any issues. I uh, put a the, put the 90 degree fitting there and used this compression barb uh, just so that we could send some soft tubing out and then back that way in the case uh, to attach to the rest of the cooling system. But you know, 
you never want to see these touching if you could avoid it. However, I still think that uh, that we're not going to be running into any problems here and, uh, and we're good to go um, to move on to the next part of the build. So despite all these fan wires being in the way, uh, it's time to plumb up this bottom section here and then we're going to move on to doing um, the hard line runs up top. But once we get everything connected, um, then we could kind of just turn our focus to the main chamber uh, because the soft tubing runs down here aren't really all that interesting. There's not very much to them um, and they're not going to be all that pretty. So let me just get this done and then uh, we'll go back up there and, and make everything look nice. All plumbed up. Uh, I tried to give the, uh, the tubes down here just a little bit of slack in the event that I needed to manipulate them to install something else, to move stuff around to, you know, our, our lighting controls are gonna have to go down here or something. The power supply is gonna have to go in here. So we're gonna have to move these uh, around a little bit and there's plenty of play in them for that. And the two drain valves went in here as well um, using a T-junction and, uh, and come off here and we have these ball valves. Uh, so when we need to drain the loop, uh, this is uh, reservoir one and this is reservoir two. Now we come to, I guess, the hard part. Although, because we've done some significant planning ahead of time, the hard part hopefully won't be quite as hard as it might otherwise be. Uh, we're gonna have two tubes going here, two tubes going here. Uh, these two tubes will stay, but we're actually gonna put fittings down there so we don't end up with uh, a giant mess on our hands. And then we're gonna have two tubes coming up this way, running parallel vertically. Uh, one of them's gonna go into the block, one of them's gonna go into the radiator up here. And then there's gonna be a secondary connection from the block back to the radiator to make the loop. And that should be about it. I think we'll be able to push through this, get this whole loop done, hopefully by the end of this video. So the majority of the build process is done. Um, I actually ran into a few spacing issues as I was routing, uh, mainly this right here. Um, and the majority of it actually had to do with uh, memory clearance. Uh, I initially just ran this tube right here uh, with a 90 degree right off of the block. But I found that in doing so, I created problems with um, height clearance for memory uh, on this bank of dims. So I actually bumped it out with a couple of spacers and now we come out and then over and then up. Similarly over here, I didn't want to run into the same kind of clearance issue. So I just kind of came up and then straight over and in. Uh, so we now actually have um, not only the tubes set up the way I want them, but plenty of room. Uh, well, plenty, I guess is a relative term but plenty of room to get in here and manipulate things like inserting the dims, uh, running our cabling and stuff like that. But we're going to leak test these loops without anything else in here um, to minimize potential 
damage if something catastrophic were to happen. Um, but, you know, as always, as you should always do, leak test your loops without power going to your main components. So I'm going to be using a separate power supply to power up uh, each loop individually, uh, run them for, I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe two hours. I'm not usually the kind of person that will run something for 24 hours. I, I feel if it's, if it's going to leak, it'll leak uh, at least relatively quickly. So I'm going to run these loops, make sure that it's all good. We don't have any leaks. And uh, then we'll move on to finishing everything up.